Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs> This man has directed one of my favorite movies ever, known as The Band's Visit. Now we are talking about his latest film, Let It Be Morning. Israeli film director, Aaron Kolirin. How are you today? Good. How are you, Robert? I am fantastic. Listen, as soon as I heard that you made another movie after The Band's Visit, and it was this one, I said, all right, I got to talk to Aaron. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the, with the first film, The Band's Visit, it's a Arab-Israeli interaction between an Egyptian band that comes to Israel and ends up performing in a small town when they thought that they were going to perform in a major metropolitan city. Uh, in this one, you know, we're dealing with love, we're dealing with war, we're dealing with, with joy. How is it that you are able, as a filmmaker, to find the balance between tragedy and humor and have it blend in one film. Oh, well, uh, thank you for seeing that in the film, first of all. <laughs> uh, I think it comes from a kind of a natural uh, inclination I have. Like, like, I cannot have the thing, you know, being totally funny unless it breaks down at some point and become tragic. And I can't really, I don't really like when the film is only tragic. So it's, there's always, it's like playing with this little music, like, uh, like a collage of different feelings that, you know, you want the viewer to kind of be, be thrown away from one to another very, very quickly. And I think this, this is what creates the general tone. But isn't that the entire existence of the Middle East, whether it's Israel, whether it's Lebanon, whether it's Syria or Egypt? You know, today is tragic. Tomorrow we're going to a wedding. Like, yeah, well, I guess also you can say that about the U.S. the same way. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> it's like uh, you we live in a time where you wake up and you don't know, you know, <laughs> what's gonna happen today, and you know who's gonna come at me from where. So people are, uh, yeah, well, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, with this film, let it be morning. You know, again, we're dealing with a uh, Palestinian-born Israeli, uh, the, char the character of Sammy, and dealing with, uh, you know, being in this Arab village and d dealing with the wall that, that is now the partition wall that divides the Israelis uh, and the Palestinians. Uh, I've been to Israel and I've been to the Palestinian side in 2018. Uh, and it is heartbreaking that you know, there has to be this partition wall that, that puts it up, especially uh, the one that reminds me the most uh, that hurt the most was the Tomb of the Patriarchs, where they put up a partition wall and Abraham and Sarah are right in the middle. And I was like, these are the people that represent Judaism, Christianity and Islam. And yet we have to be divided because of personal strife or political strife instead of religious virtue. Um how does this work on a regular basis between the between the two entities living on either side of this wall? I I I don't understand exactly the question. Okay, so you know, in, in part of the film, we we deal with crossing over between the Israeli and the Palestinian side. Yeah, the and, film. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so the, the film talks about. I think not many people know of the Palestinian minority within Israel, which means the Palestinian that are holding like uh, Israeli citizenship. Mm -hmm. uh, they are supposed to be treated as equal under the law, but actually are treated as you know second-rate uh, citizens, and they kind of live under a constant fear of of um, of the Israelis on the one hand uh, taking their citizenship and, and you know transferring them to uh, to the Palestinian side which is a plan that has been proposed on on a lot of times by right uh, wing uh, uh, governments here and between this kind of accusation of the Israeli side that doesn't see them as part of them they are not they are like the the classical in-betweeners, you know, and um, 
and I think, I mean, and this uh, this film is based on the book by Said Kashua, the Palestinian writer, um, who, who I think very cleverly, very interestingly in the in his book, uh, says like you know, even sometimes where there's there is no wall, there is a wall, you know. So the fact that these are the Palestinian that live inside Israeli territory and not uh, the ones in the West Bank that are uh, surrounded by a wall, even though there is a wall, which is uh, the separation between the classes, the the the, the, the separation of attitude and how the, the, the uh, state treat uh, them and how they are caught between their uh, identities their, uh, and their, would you say, affiliation or... Uh, um belonging um so what happens in the film is like a wall that was basically always there in the mind and in the attitude and in the way the state uh, treat the people uh, is suddenly kind of manifests itself in as a physical wall you know uh, in a very absurd situation and suddenly this village uh no small village that tries to somehow survive this life, find itself like one day completely detached from the outside world and separated. And uh, so this is the where the film focus in uh, aspects of uh, which uh, social group, uh, you know, it focuses on. And, you know, I, I know for a while that the Mizrahi Jews, the, the Arab and Persian Jews, uh, for a lack of a better term, you know, had experienced something similar because people treated them as if, well, you know, you're you're culturally more Arab even though you're Jewish, or you're culturally more Persian than you are Jewish. Yeah. And how did and, that, you know, you eventually know, work and, itself out? And I think again, that is something very beautiful in Syed's uh, book that it's also so uh, it, it also deals with the class separation that that happens within, you know, the ethnical groups uh, and. How uh, Palestinian uh, Israelis are also condescending somehow to their brothers in the West Bank, and how there is this divide and conquer system. And you know, of course, you can see this the same way within the Israeli society, as you said. Um, there was uh, the Ashkenazi, uh, 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 how do you say, group, uh, which suppressed and treated the Mizrahi Jews that came from the Oriental uh, state as second-rate uh, citizens. And, uh, and you know, uh, it's like inevitable, like every ruling, like each ruling casta <laughs> in some way creates, you know, this subdivision and subdivision and subdivisions all the time just to kind of separate itself as the super superiority. And, you know, you, you could see the same thing going in, I think, a lot of uh, immigration states and how uh, people are, uh, you know, treating the newcomers as, as different, tre treating the, the workmen that come from other countries as different and, you know, c continually kind of separating the elite where the money is from, you know, other classes. Um, and uh, what I really, what really drew me to Syed's book in this aspect is how he deals with this endless vortex of separations. And in a small nation like Israel, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't take very long to, to get across the country, you know, with all the divide that's in there, how is there even hope for unity at this point? Whether it's through the arts or through education or you know, through films like yours, where it shines a light on the relations between the populace within the nation itself. Well, I hope the film can connect and, you know, connect to people and, you know, make them at least see, reconsider, uh, acknowledge, you know, things, just to see them for a second from an artistic point of view. You know, I hope this, you know, uh, can make, uh, you know, some some difference. Uh where does one find hope? I don't know. It's just, you know, you know, they say hope dies last somehow. <laughs> so uh, if you ask me about uh, my rational thought, uh, there, I don't see any hope. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but uh, I can't think only with my head, you know. <laughs> so your head tells you there's no hope, but your heart is still holding on to it. Yeah.
<laughs> when you take when you take the novel that Said wrote and then you translate it to a film, how difficult is it? Because cer certain imagery doesn't translate well from the written word onto the film itself. How is how do you stay true to the essence of the of the original story without diverging yeah. from it? Yeah, I mean uh, that it's a very uh, it's a question on the spot. It's very tricky to adapt a novel. The way I seen it, the way I saw it was, and the, like kind of decision I made me with myself at the very beginning was that I don't need to be faithful for any detail of the story as plot, as long as I'm always faithful to the spirit of the book as I see it. Because sometimes to get the specific spirit. In the film, uh, taking in mind the, the 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 production I can you know uh, have or you know some, sometimes there are things that I can't produce in the money that I have and I have to find another way to get the feeling out in a, in different kind of way. Which um, so that was the main thing with the adaptation was um, kind of taking the emotional arc of what I see in, in the film and the feeling that I get from the book and what its its spirit is. And sometimes if I have to, then changing the plot or changing the, the, the function of the character in a way that will allow me to get this, this spirit out because the spirit is the most important thing. And, you know, adapting films to the books to films is not about staging a book. Because, the, you know, the book is out there, it's a very good book, I recommend everyone to, to read it, uh, you know, but the book is is already there, and as you said, it's like a different medium, and and you need sometimes to to adapt it, you know, to adapt it in order to get, its, to get it more truthful and more faithful to the book. Yeah, and with Sammy's character in, in the movie, you know, he's built a wall around himself he's almost an onion there's so many layers that he has to peel back he's a palestinian born israeli with israeli citizenship he's living in jerusalem he reluctantly has to go home to this arab village he's not allowed to leave once there's a blockade and now the world is coming apart that he's built for himself outside of this arab community Yes, it's about, you know, one man walls, walls kind of falling down while an, another wall is built around his uh, village. So he's, this gives him an opportunity to uh, re-know himself, you know, to, re, uh, uh, to meet himself, to look at himself in the mirror and understand his identity, his belonging the thing his home what what is his home where it is and how some you know how some some things are you can't erase them you can't you can't just say i forgot or i'm not from there you know there's something that's there. so it's a process of acknowledging himself which makes him at the end of the day a, a freer uh person um and and you know gets him to the point where he sees his life he doesn't avoid his life, but he's confronting his life. Um, so, you know, that's the story of the main character. Yeah. Uh, Iran, every time I talk to a filmmaker and they make something that's this humorous, this emotional, this, you know, engaging, uh, I always ask, as a filmmaker, what do you learn about yourself when you make a movie like this? Uh, what I learned about myself um i uh, i i've in the process of making it for example i've learned that sia is like the greatest <laughs> pop singer on earth <laughs> uh just just listening to her songs while directing or you know uh because in some ways i felt that this film is like a, a darkness that creeps in on a place, you know, and I had this feeling, and when I direct, I usually listen to music to give me some sort of the feeling of the film. What is it about? And I was listening only to pop songs, like the sweetest pop songs when I made this movie. 
uh, and I was hooked on Sia at, at that time, and uh, which one of her songs found its its place in the film uh, Chandelier, and and you know I was I was thinking to myself that in the darkest hours it's only like a pop song that can take you out of hell. You know you don't wanna you don't, you don't need like a symphony <laughs> at this point. You need you need you need you need chandelier to take you out of it. And uh, my appreciation of pop, I always loved pop, but kind of my appreciation and why I like it, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, like manifested itself for me. <laughs> yeah, when it, the the beauty in this film. The lighting, the shadowing, you know, Jerusalem itself and the village itself are characters in their own right. You know, they're not just background dressing. They're a part of the story. How important was it that the scenery be a character? Oh, it was very important to me and the scenery and the light because uh, it's a film about a place being disconnected from the, uh, the outer world and disconnected from electricity and disconnected from communication. So I, I until morning comes in a way, you know, and until a certain new morning comes. So it was very important to me to that the film would have this kind of movement into darkness, where at the beginning you would see all the details and the beauty of the places. And as, as you go, the kind of the background disappears everything disappears and all you are left with are like faces in the darkness, you know? And um, and so when morning, morning, new morning finally hits, it's like, you know, it will hit you in the gut somehow. And I, I spoke to my uh, DOP, Shai, who I've worked with on the band's visit and basically with all of my, all of my, all my films, he's a great uh, director of photography and a friend and, and we, we try to understand how we make this transition to, and uh, and it was like Shai uh, uh, lit the whole like first third, third of the the film is very colorful. Is you know there's a lot of lights, there's a lot of colors that you see, and then from the middle on we are left just with candle lights, and everyone now with you know candle lights and. And then the third part of the film, we thought, okay, now even the candle lights are like finished, you know, and people are just walking in complete darkness under a very thin moonlight, you know, and you're not, you can't even know who's who and what is what. And uh, Shai was working very hard on getting this darkness out. And and I hope people go to watch this film in the cinema because I think the uh, the effect of uh, this dark darkness and light in the film can be felt uh, very strongly in the cinema. What important message do you think, uh, you know, this is the two-part question. What message do you think is revealed from the Middle Eastern mindset and the Arabs and the Israelis will understand in the film that they will connect with? And what do you think a Western audience will sit there and pick up the that they will connect with you know i guess i would have the same answer for both crowds in, in some ways um, because you know i always say that you know if you know films are not about delivering a message if you want to deliver a message you, you'd better write a post on facebook or you know so people will read it and it would be it wouldn't take like seven years of your life <laughs> walking around if you want a, a message they they deal with something else they deal with your with the opening of the heart and the, the gaze of the heart that opens on things and the, you know they might get you softer uh, films they might make you more tender they might you know and then you might be able to reconsider stuff and then you might be able to to see things differently and rebuild them differently or this is what you know a film does as, as an emotional journey you know so i'm not on to you know telling the, the crowd about any how they, they need to interpret it I, I what i wish is just for people to come with an open heart to a film which i think was made very lovingly by a lot of people i hope with an open heart 
and let it speak to them and speak back to the film and whatever comes of this i think is good well let it be morning opens in los angeles and new york on february 3rd and in 30 new markets uh 30 major markets across the united states on february 10th eron thank you so much for your time today where can we find you on social media if we want to connect with you and continue to discuss uh, on facebook film? i'm on facebook <laughs> <laughs> Please Just do. Keep it thank very you, Robert. Simple. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I love your work. And I'm so glad thank I got, to, got a chance to talk to you. God willing, I get to meet you face to face one day. Inshallah. Thank you. <laughs>